Good morning. Friends, the Lord be with you. Grace and peace to all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, as we are called together on this beautiful fall morning to stand before God and worship. I'm particularly pleased to announce that today is World Communion Sunday, a day in which we and churches all over this country and countries throughout the world in their worship will be celebrating the Lord's Supper all on the same day. And you'll find uh, in your worship notes over on the right-hand side some information about how, and I won't go all the way through it, but the first sentence says that World Communion Sunday, which used to be known as Worldwide Communion Sunday, is truly a gift uh, or an idea of the Presbyterian Church out of Shadyside Presbyterian up in Pittsburgh. You can read more about how it evolved over the course of the last century, but uh, This is something that we stand in a proud tradition to be a part of, and it's our joy to celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper this day as it always is, but to do it with a uh, a special thought in our heads to know that we are gathering around not just this table, but a table that extends throughout the whole world and even to believers in every time and place. Now, you may notice that uh, Dr. Ken and I are wearing different stoles today. They are in observance of uh, World Communion Sunday, and he's going to be leading us in the call to worship in a a few minutes, and we'll be also uh, announcing the first hymn for us and telling a little bit about that. And I've asked him to tell us a little bit about the stoles because they both belong to him. And uh, since they belong to you, they... Their story is your story to tell. So I'm grateful to have the snazzy stole to wear today. Uh, Just know that we are wearing them in celebration of World Communion Sunday because they are from places far away from here. Just a couple of announcements as we go through the day. You should have received this week uh, a a Save the Date card for Kirkin of the Tartans, which will be at the end of this month, the 27th. There is still time to be a kilt wearer, but that time is growing near. So, gentlemen, I've had a couple of people approach me last week. I'll get with you this week, and we will get that ironed out. There's, you still have the opportunity to kilt up for Sunday uh, for Kirkin of the Tartans. And don't overwhelm me on Monday, but I, I know you're all thinking about doing it. Uh, also, and I want to let you know that uh, the 20th, the Sunday beforehand, in the evening, or the, the late afternoon or evening, we'll be having our annual Low Country Bowl. And we're looking uh, forward to that. Uh, we're going to have the bluegrass band that we had last year that was a, a great hit. If the weather's anything like it is today, it's going to be awesome. And that will be to, of course, help support our, uh, our Boy Scout troop. And, and also just to come and have a great time of fellowship in anticipation of all the other things that are going on later on in the month. Now, one other immediate announcement that I have for you is that on Wednesday, we will be taking a group up to Asheville, North Carolina, to go and visit Haywood Street Ministries and uh, Asheville Youth Mission, which our youth and some adults traveled to a couple of months ago. There is still time to sign up for that trip, but we need to hear from you uh, tomorrow so that we can give them a firm number for lunch. We'll be having lunch there at Haywood Street, and we will be participating in worship with them also. Uh, We'll leave uh, no later than 8.30. We'll leave leave at 8.30 that morning from the church. We should be back by about 4.30, and uh, Wednesday night we will not have Bible study, but we will be having the church-wide pumpkin carving event. So if you need your pumpkin carved... This is a good time to come and do it. So, that's what's going on Wednesday. If you want to be a part of the trip to Asheville, let us know tomorrow. Call the church. Uh, We still have room on that trip if you want to be a part of it. If you can spend the day with us, it's going to be a great trip. Friends, those are our announcements for this morning. So let us again turn our hearts and our minds to God's worship on this day where we celebrate the Lord's Supper the whole world round.
Good morning. These stoles are special because they came from countries in Africa. This stole is from the Methodist Church in Accra, the capital of Ghana. Uh, they were on a mission trip and the folks there presented us with these stoles. They were a, a presentation of honor for us that we could go and, and minister with them. Um, the stole Mike is wearing is from Kenya, a uh, country in East Africa that I've been to about seven times. Uh, but a beautiful country and very strong Christians there in different churches and, and I've had the privilege of ministering with them in several occasions. Will you stand please and join me for our call to worship. We have come together to praise God from whom all blessings flow. The permanent covering of earth and seas is the root of our sanctuary. We will dwell in the house of God all the days of our lives as one people. We will sing songs of praise and give thanks for God's steadfast love for us. Let everything Let that breathes worship, worship and praise God. God. As we celebrate World Communion Sunday, we sing John Oxenham's hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West. It's a strong statement of Christian unity that reflects Galatians 3.28. There's no such thing as Jew and Greek, slave and free. Male and female, you are all one person in Christ Jesus. Because we belong to Christ, our nationality, race, gender, or social, gender, or social status, are not really what matters to God. Who we are as children of his is what matters. Our hymn is 318, In Christ There Is No East or West. <laughs> Friends, you may be seated. <coughs> Friends, if we say that we have no sin, then the truth is not in us, and we truly deceive ourselves. So before God and neighbor, let us confess our sins, first in unison, and then in silence. Holy and merciful God, you are our judge, for you alone know us fully. You know the sins we hide from others, the unkind thought, the unspoken word of grace, the helping hand not offered. You alone know how we harbor jealousies and resentments, hoard resources for ourselves, and hold on to prejudices judging others. Forgive us, we pray. Bring us into your marvelous light so that we live before others as you intend. 
In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, it is the good news of the gospel that in Jesus Christ, God seeks to reconcile the whole world to God's self. It is the good news that we share the faith into which we are redeemed, that Christ lived for us, Christ died for us, and Christ is risen for us. So brothers and sisters, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Friends, you may be seated. If all the children will come down and join us, please. Good morning. Oh, that sounded good. Let's do it again. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm so glad to see you this morning. We are going to be talking this morning about faith. Do you know where faith, faith comes from? Faith, faith comes from the Word of God. And God tells us that if we have the faith of a mustard seed, tiny little mustard seed. You want to see one? Look there, look how tiny. They're even dancing in the bag. Look how tiny those mustard seeds are. You see them? Wow, see them? Wow, they're tiny. That if we have faith the size of one of these little mustard seeds that we can move mountains and part the seeds and do all kind of glorious things through God. Well, this morning, we're also thinking about what our church does and how we have grown in the past year. And, you know, God makes us grow. So we're going to plant this morning some mustard seeds in these little pots. And I have a pot with your name on it. And as I call you, I want you to come up and I'm going to let you put some mustard seeds in your pot. And then we're going to cover it up with some dirt. And then what are we going to do with it? Water it. Because it takes what? It takes water, doesn't it? Who sends the rain? God. God sends the rain. Who made the dirt? God made the dirt. It all goes back to God, right? Right. Okay, Wren, why don't you come up? Let's see what we can do. Sally, 
There you go. Perfect. All right, and here's a little dirt from the top. There you go. Okay. Hello. Where is it? There it is, Ella Francis. Okay. Here we go. Good. And a little dirt. There we go. Good job. See one, we'll make you one. There you go. Let me move the papers. There you go. Here, put this in. <coughs> just a handful of dirt. <coughs> So guys, now that we've planted these, what are we going to do? We're going to water them. That's right. We're going to keep watering them, and we're going to let them have sunlight, and we're going to watch them grow. That's right. But some of it is we have to wait. They're not going to pop out before we finish here today, are they? You think they'll be out by tomorrow? It might take a whole week. It might take a while for those little tiny seeds to come up and out of there, might it? Well, we're going to pray. And I tell you what, we're going to keep an eye on these. And we're going we're gonna to see these again probably sometime soon. Does that sound good? That day you'll be able to take them home. That's right. So, would you all like to pray? Let's pray over our, our mustard seeds. Dear God, thank you for these seeds. Bless them and help them to grow. Bless us too and help us to grow. Amen. Yes, I do. Thank you. If you're wondering why I stayed back, uh, I may have told you before, some people have a green thumb, I have a black thumb. And if I get near plants to water them, they, they die quickly. So I don't, I, don't, I don't plant. Because I want them to do well, and I think they will. And you'll be seeing more from them later. Friends, let us join our hearts and our minds in prayer. Holy and loving God, Send your spirit among us this day for the word that is read, and the word that is proclaimed, and the word that is embodied in the Lord's Supper. Be with us all. Open our hearts that we may know you more deeply in this hour. Open our ears that we may hear you. And open our eyes that we may see you. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Habakkuk. I'll be reading chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Hear now God's word to the church this morning. This is the oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? 
or cry out to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous and therefore judgment comes forth perverted. Now continuing in chapter 2. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write this vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and it does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, and it will not delay. Look at and see the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke's gospel. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. And I should give you some background. The, the disciples had just been told by Jesus that they need to forgive often many times for someone who repents of sinning. And the disciples asked Jesus in that moment, increase our faith. The Lord replies to them, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who had just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you rather not say to him, Prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, Later you may eat and drink. You thank that slave for doing what was commanded. So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, simply say, we are worthless slaves. We have only done what we ought to have done. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
we heard what Jesus said. If your faith is the size of a mustard seed, you could tell the tree to uproot itself and go and be replanted in the ocean, and it would obey. The thing is, we don't want a mustard seed faith. We, we don't. We, we don't want a little bit of faith. If we talk about how much faith is necessary or how much faith we'd like to have in our lives, we don't want a little tiny amount. We're Americans. We want big faith. We want the kind of faith that we can store away and have no matter what happens. And we want lots of it left over at any given time. We want to go to Costco and be able to buy faith the way we go to Costco or Sam's Club and buy toilet paper. <laughs> Not just six rolls, because, you know, an emergency could happen. Bad things could happen. And, you know, getting that big 74-roll thing that you got to open up the back and put the back seat of your car down to be able to get it in your car, you look at it and you think, that makes sense. You know, you could never have too little toilet paper around the house, right? So you, we stand there in Costco and we look at it and we're like, yeah, I can see having that around. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Or, you know, you move on over and you think, wow, you know, they've got, you can buy 275 fish sticks. Because you never know when, like, all the kids in the neighborhood may come over to the house. And while you're at it, you might as well get 25 gallons of lemonade, too, because, you know, powdered lemonade. That way you're ready. So now you've got all the toilet paper and fish sticks and lemonade that you could ever need. It makes sense to us. And so when we hear Jesus talk about just this tiny amount of faith, and we think, wow, that's much more important than fish sticks or toilet paper and I know toilet paper is important, but I mean, it's, it's much more important than that. And Jesus is telling us we just need a tiny bit. We're not interested in hearing that. But Jesus persists. Jesus keeps talking about the mustard seed. Jesus is hung up on the mustard seeds. This is not the only place in our Gospels where he says a mustard seed-sized faith is all that you need. In Matthew 17, the disciples had just come back. They had tried to heal a person that was an epileptic, and, the, and they didn't even tell Jesus. The people around him told the man, or, or the people around the man told Jesus that the disciples had tried to heal him, but they had failed, and Jesus gets frustrated with them. And then he says to them, Guys, if you had faith even the size of a mustard seed, this tiny little thing, you could tell a mountain to get up and move, and it would obey. Now, we're familiar with this statement. We've all heard about the mustard seed, and I may draw upon these again, but our kids just planted a bunch of mustard seeds, and you'll hear from them again before this month is out. But if you've never had the chance to see mustard seeds up close, I'm going to try, I'm going to hold this real tight and sort of turn it over, because I don't want mustard seeds all over the floor. But you can see, it's like Connie said, they kind of dance around in there. They're so tiny that all you have to do is squeeze it a little bit. Y'all can see these things are tiny. That's not a lot of faith, y'all. They wouldn't sell this at Costco. Doesn't make any sense. You can't buy this in bulk. Well, you can buy a bunch of seeds, but just one of them. And we've talked about mustard seeds before here from this place. We've talked about how the mustard plant, when it grows out, is not this tame little domestic plant, the mustard plant that grew out, and everyone that Jesus was talking to would have known this, was invasive. It was the kudzu of the Near East. 
That's exactly what I told you all before. I'm just reminding you, mustard seeds got out of control in a hurry. They grew big, they grew fast, they could edge out the other stuff that you had going on in your garden. So people likely didn't get excited when they heard about the prospect of mustards, mustard plants growing in their yard. Now, coming back to what Jesus is saying about the tree uprooting and going into the sea or the mountain that moves somewhere else, I think sometimes this is a stumbling block for us because sometimes we tend to think of this kind of faith as sounding a lot like a parlor trick moving one thing from one place. Just believe it and it will do. We, we think about faith in the light that uh, back in the second of the Star Wars movies, The Empire Strikes Back, when, now some of you will get this and some of you won't, but there's this scene where uh, Luke Skywalker is supposed to be able to move his, his X-wing fighter ship out of a swamp. And so he stands there and he tries to levitate it just by the by telepathic power. And he gets it up and it, a little water comes off of it. And he, he makes all kinds of contorted looks and you know, the vein pops out on the side of his head. And, and, and then it just sinks back in. He gets, makes a little bit of headway, but it doesn't go all the way. And then the, the little uh, Yoda guy... I'm not saying that with enough reverence for the real Star Wars devotees, but Yoda comes over there and he looks at it and he looks at him and then he just sort of aims his little hand and out comes the ship out of the water. We think of faith in those kinds of terms, that if we believe it, we could just look at that mountain or that tree and then move it over there. That's not how it works. It's not a magic incantation. It's not a parlor trick. And we know that. We wish it wasn't like that, but we we know that because the truth is we have our own mulberry trees in our lives and we have our own mountains. Not the things that we just look over there. And, and, and one of the commentators on this particular passage said that, that Jesus probably just looked around and the first thing he saw was a mulberry tree and said, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could look at that tree and you could send it over into the water and it would uproot and it would obey. We get hung up on the items, but we know that in our own lives, in our own spheres of influence there are things that we wouldn't mind seeing get uprooted from where they are and go to somewhere else in our own lives we know that there are mountains that cause us great difficulty and consternation and that we pray every day we will find some way to negotiate and and it wouldn't bother us at all if that mountain would get up and just go somewhere else. It wouldn't bother us at all if that mountain would just disappear. Sometimes these things in our lives seem a lot less likely than a tree uprooting itself and jumping into the ocean where it replants. Sometimes the health problems we face or the relationship issues that we run into or any one of a number of all too human problems. They seem like a walk in a park next to the mountains that we or that we would like to see moved. We see these things in our lives and we think, wow, Lord, I'm going to need the whole bag of mustard seeds to make that work. And, and, and if you can help me out a little more, I'm going to need that bag of mustard seeds to grow up real fast. Or we want to go somewhere and find it. We'd like nothing better, to be honest. Like I said at the top of the sermon, we'd like nothing better than to be able to run into Sam's Club or to Costco or just anywhere to run in and, and stock up on faith. 
Get enough that we could deal with what's in front of us and then enough that we could put in the freezer or in the closet or in the garage that we are well stocked for whatever else comes along. We want desperately to go and find it and hoard it up and have it for ourselves. That's what we need. We need a lot of faith. We're going to need a lot of faith to get through this. We're going to need a lot of faith to make it through this funeral and the, the time that comes after it. We're going to need a lot of faith to deal with this chemotherapy that's coming. We're going to need a lot of faith to deal with managing money and month before the end of the year and Christmas comes and college is out there for, for our children. We're going to need a lot of faith to turn on the news and watch what's going on in the world. Well, there's bad news, folks, and there's good news. The bad news is you can't just run down to the store and get it. The bad news is Costco doesn't have an aisle or a place way, way back in the back behind the powdered lemonade and behind the toilet paper and all that stuff where you can go and get faith. Sam's doesn't either. The bad news is, even the bag of seeds, we're not 100% sure what to do with. But the good news, the good news is you don't even have to leave your own home. The good news is that faith is truly a gift that God gives to us. Faith is truly a gift that is available to all of us. And as we've said over the course of the last few weeks, just as a little grace goes a long way and just as a little hope goes a long way, we think about this mustard seed or these mustard seeds and we realize that a little faith goes a long way too. There's a lot of ways to look at it, and there's a lot of ways to sort of narrow it down. One way of looking at it is, is sort of the way we talked about uh, the other night in our Bible study on Romans. We talked about faith being a gift that helps us to understand what God is doing for us in the person of Jesus Christ. And what Christ does for us in setting us right-wise with God. My former professor, David Bartlett, from Columbia Seminary, put it this way, and it's in your bulletin for you to take home with you, but he says this, that faith is our response to God's making us right in Jesus Christ. Faith isn't achieving. Faith is receiving. Faith is Christmas morning accepting the gift that's under the tree, or more importantly, adoring the child that's in the manger. Faith stands at Calvary and says, Surely this was the Son of God. Faith rises on Easter morning to hail the risen Lord. Faith is gratitude and joy. And, of course, obedience. But it's obedience that begins with joy. And I would add, it's the obedience that begins with the joy at the gift that we don't know the full ramifications of simply because we can't understand or comprehend all that there is to it. But it's the knowledge that God is truly wanting the best for all of us and that God is in the person of Jesus Christ setting us right and putting us on the road to being sanctified and made more holy. I have a friend, a dear friend, one of my, in fact, the person I have known outside of my family the longest of anyone in my life. I never know a time when he and I were not friends, or I can't think of one. We played as uh, children, infants even, in the church where we grew up, we went to, as it turned out, we went to every single school together, which was uh, until college. We did everything together, 
he helped officiate at Jennifer's and my wedding, and I helped at his. I was not ordained then, but I was, I was the best man in his wedding. Several years ago, six years ago actually, he and his wife traveled to Washington, D.C. for the inauguration because their uh, daughter's band was marching in the presidential inauguration, and it was very, very cold. They rode on a bus, and it was very windy outside, and his wife, Amy, came down with the flu, and at the same time, we think, came down with a respiratory infection. It got complicated. In fact, I was in their house the day that she said, I'm not feeling good. They'd just gotten back from the trip. I'd been in Asheville for something, and I went and had breakfast with them, and she was talking about how bad she felt and that she was going to the doctor. Bill and I kept up by text message, and things were worse. The flu and the respiratory infection just seemed to spiral out of control, and it wasn't 10 days later that she had died. We were heartbroken. All that knew her, all that knew Bill, and all of us that were friends were heartbroken over what had happened. And so it was about a month later, I went to see him, took a trip up to Asheville, and I sat there with him. They had two children in high school, and we talked about all that had happened. We talked about how awful the whole thing was. And I said to him, how do you do it? How do you get up in the morning? How do you... How do you take care of these kids? And he looked at me and he said, Honestly, I don't know. I can tell you it feels like this grief and all that I have to do feels like a mountain that is on top of me that I'm trying to dig out and move with a spoon. And he said, every morning I get up and I pray and I get my spoon out and I start digging. And he said, I don't know where I get the strength to do that. Only, only God knows. But every day, he puts the spoon in my hand and I go to work. Faith is the thought. Faith faith is the trust. Faith is the idea that things aren't always going to end up the way they appear, I suppose. Faith is knowing that sometimes that mountain that moves... Is only going to move when God hands us a spoon. Faith is the hope for what's in that box under the tree that Dr. Bartlett speaks about. Faith is the sense that that crucified man really is the Son of God, the thing we can't quantify, but somewhere, some tiny part of us, maybe the size of a mustard seed, knows there's spe- something special about him that says he really is the Son of God. Faith is that odd impulse that we aren't sure where it comes from that drives us curiously out of our beds on Easter morning with a little extra spring in our step and a little extra hope on our minds. Not sure as we come to church of just what we might find. Friends, faith is that mustard seed impulse that lets us all pick up our own spoon and start moving the mountains that we know must obey the one that calls us. In the name of God the Creator, God the Sustainer, and God the Holy Spirit, Amen.
Friends, it is with faith and with hope that we come to this place, that we come and we gather around this table that is gathered around this day by Christians all over the world. It's with faith and hope that we come with joy to this that is the joyful feast of the people of God. You see, we're assured in Scripture that people will come from east and west and from north and south to sit at table in the kingdom of God. It was according to Luke that when our risen Lord was at the table with His disciples, He took the bread and He blessed and He broke it and He gave it to them. Their eyes were open and they recognized Him. Brothers and sisters, this is the Lord's table that we're called to. Our Savior invites all who trust Him to share this feast which has been prepared. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Friends, let us continue in prayer. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. In your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image and set us in this world to love and to serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you and refused to trust or obey, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way. And then in the fullness of time and out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us and to heal our brokenness. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with the faithful of every time and place, especially on this special World Communion Sunday, who forever sing to the glory of your name, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. In Jesus, who was born of Mary, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. He lived as one of us, knowing joy and sorrow. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, opened blind eyes, broke bread with outcasts and sinners, and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to the needy. In dying on the cross, he gave himself for the life of the world. In rising from the grave, he won for us victory over death. And seated at your right hand, he leads us to eternal life. We praise you that Christ now reigns with you in glory and will come again to make all things new. And together we join in praise and in supplication, praying the prayer that your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It was on the night that our Savior was betrayed that he was at table with his friends. And after he had given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said to them, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat.
Friends, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat. same way that he took the cup and after having given thanks he poured it out for them saying this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood poured out for the remission of sins whenever you take of this bread or you drink of this cup you do so in remembrance of me
Friends, the cup of salvation that is poured out for all of us, take and drink with joy. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for calling us to this, your table that you have set for all of us. We give you thanks for all who have been called around this table, whether in this room or in places near to us or in places very far away. We pray that your spirit will move among all of us, that we may all be called to go out and to be builders of your kingdom. Sustain us, Lord, with this meal. And show us your way. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, I invite you to rise with me as we affirm our faith using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. Brothers and sisters, just as Christ made himself a sacrifice for all of us, we are called to make ourselves an offering before God. We're called to do this in giving of our tithes and offerings and to prayerfully consider how we might go into the world to be the hands and the feet of the body of Christ. Let us give of ourselves now.
pray. Holy and loving God, take these gifts and the gifts you have given each of us to send them out into the world and to send us out into the world to do your work and to build your kingdom. Guide us by your Spirit, Lord, that we may truly be the hands and the feet of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, go out from this place knowing that the faith we need may not move a tree into the ocean. The faith we need is the trust and the impulse to pick up our spoon and to know that God is with us in every scoop that we move the mountain with. So go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which is good and return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Friends, honor all people. Love and serve the Lord rejoicing each day in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with each of us this day and forever. Amen.